take a look here, everyone. I think this is the definitive proof that this is uh, definitely not a 20,000 mile car because this is a replacement. It would not say 89 to 92 on a 1990 car, now would it? And it wouldn't say 129,511 miles, 120 miles an hour, 91 FB, whatever that is. So I, I think that's probably what the correct mileage is on this car. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's a huge disappointment. Anyway, that makes sense, but I've been ripped off. So here I am recording my car rolling over to 20,000 miles. I was very proud of the fact that I got such a low mileage Firebird, especially a, a, such an old car, a 1990, one of my dream cars. And of course, this came as a massively devastating blow to find out that this car actually has around 150,000 miles on it. But I'll be honest with you, from the get-go, I suspected that there was something wrong. And now, our feature presentation. The first time I drove the car, I felt that the clutch was worn, very worn, and this doesn't happen with a low mileage car. I did think that perhaps the previous owner just didn't know how to drive a manual transmission and was riding the clutch and had caused premature wear, but other little problems started to rear their ugly heads. Things like every time you start the car there's a little puff of blue smoke out of the exhaust. This means usually that your valve stem seals are damaged or broken. And this usually only happens with very high mileage cars. Unless, of course, you've overheated the engine a few times, this can also cause it. There were many other telltale signs though. As soon as I started to work on the engine and work around the car, I started to notice lots of things that pointed to the fact that this was in fact a very high mileage car. But you have to admit from the outside it looks very new, even the interior is in great shape. So when I saw the ads online, when I purchased the car, I was fairly confident that I was getting a low mileage car. I also didn't expect to get scammed like this in America, especially since I bought this car through Car Gurus, a very well known website, and of course they do some due diligence on the paperwork. I also first looked at the Carfax before I bought the car, and according to the Carfax anyway, yes, it was stolen right when the car was bought for about a week, but it was recovered. The weird thing is, is that the first time any mileage was reported on the car was when it was purchased by Toyota of Orlando, Florida. But before that, it seems to be exempt from having to write down the mileage, which is kind of weird. But I trusted that the Carfax was correct and, uh, you know, I made what I thought was an informed purchase. Anyway, enough whining. Let's take a look and see how I managed to more or less definitively prove that this is not a sub 20,000 mile car. So I've been working on this car feverishly. Since I got it, it's never run right, so I've had to replace pretty much the entire fuel injection system. I've rebuilt the TBI, I've replaced the idle air control valve, I've replaced the distributor, I've replaced, well, you name it, I've replaced it and I've done it. And I'm going to be releasing videos showing you how I did all of these things, because I have done a hell of a lot of work on the car and I am not giving up on this car. I still love the car, but man, did this take the wind out of my sails. And I tell you what, I just don't even want to look at it right now. So it's a good thing I've got the 78 Trans Am to focus on and put my energies into kind of while I get over this. Because let's be honest, you need motivation to work on a car. And if that motivation's not there, well, you know. Anyway, now what really solidified the fact that this was a high mileage car was, as you saw in the beginning of the video, when I removed the instrument cluster because I was trying to replace a blown light bulb, I saw written on the side obviously by whoever had installed the replacement cluster, the original mileage of the car. Uh, this of course is not the only thing. While I was busy working on all the uh, fuel injection shenanigans, because look, this car just hasn't been running right. It's been getting terrible gas mileage. Something about seven to eight miles a gallon, which is ridiculous for this car. It should be getting about 23. Um, I looked at the uh, ECM, the engine control module, which is the computer of the car. And written right there on the ECM is 
you know, this is a junkyard thing. They usually use these paint markers to write, uh, you know, the identification of the parts. It's written there saying that it was, uh, you know, for an automatic, which is not what this car is. My car is, of course, a manual transmission. So it's the wrong ECM. So, you know, eBay came to the rescue and I actually ordered the correct one, which I've installed now. Didn't actually make a difference because the oxygen sensor is all filed up by the leaky valve stem seal so i guess it's getting the wrong reading and all that but either way you know the fact that the ecm had been replaced by a junkyard unit as well as the cluster is definitive proof that this is a very old, old car very high mileage car because the ecm usually doesn't go out on these things so where to from here well there's not really much i can do i suspect whoever did this fraud roll back of the odometer kind of thing did it somewhere in 2012 and when they shipped it off to Florida they sold it as a low mileage car all I can really do about it is take it as school fees I paid a lot for this car it ended up costing me about eleven and a half thousand US dollars when all was said and done to get it to California never mind the fact that I had to pay the exorbitant California sales tax of over a thousand dollars this car is as it stands with that amount of mileage on it worth maybe five i will be continuing to work on it like i said before i still love the car i have done a lot to it i've made the hood scoop functional i've more or less fixed everything i have to do the valve stem seals next which is a huge job and it's not something that i want to do especially in that cramped engine bay but you know what are you going to do there will be more coming from the formula to happiness but it's going to be a while i think you're going to see a couple of 78 trans am videos as far as these technical fix-up videos are concerned in between and finally when i take the 78 trans am in for paint because i'm going to get a professional shop to paint it it's going to be gone for about two months being painted and during that time i'll get to work on the 1990 firebird formula again anyway guys thank you so much for watching i know this is very depressing at least for me anyway but I hope that, uh, you know, you can learn from my mistakes. This was the first time I'd ever bought a car sight unseen on the internet. And this is going to be the last time I will ever do such a thing because I've learned my lesson. Even using reputable websites and I uh, looked up the car. In fact, there's even a video of this car uh, that was made by a very reputable dealership in Florida, uh, which I watched prior to purchasing the car and it looked good to me so you know it looked like everything was fine but without actually being able to get my hands on the car and without being able to actually take it for a test drive um, I wasn't able to spot the very telltale signs anyway guys thank you so much for watching I can't wait to see you in the next worthless whips so until then keep the rubber side down shiny side up and keep it between the ditches there's a distance between us it's getting hard to reach out Haven't seen you in seasons But all I hear is your voice I know my limits You can break me down but I'll stay till the finish line and I've been counting minutes for quite some time now Just to see you again